I'm going to show you how I research a metagame for Magic the Gathering. This video is very valuable for anyone who wants to start grinding RCQs, or if you're an arena player and you just want to pick a deck, this is a good video to watch too. So to research a Magic metagame, what I like to do is go to a couple places. And the first one is going to be mtggoldfish.com. So what's helpful about this website is that you get to see the meta share of like the top decks over here. So we can see that Esper midrange at the very top and then domain and then like so forth, right? So this visual view is the easiest way for me to see like a deck. I think a lot of people also like text, but this is just easier for me. What's helpful about this exercise is seeing what threats kind of the top decks have and also what kind of interaction they have. And also we can check out the sideboard. Looking at Esper Legends over here, uh, I have some experience playing Esper Legends, so I do know how this deck works. And I assume most standard players do because this deck's very popular. Esper Legends has just one of the strongest curves in the game and I can see also there's a little bit of interaction. There's three make disappears. There's also two cut downs to destroy evils and two go over the throats and also these. So this is taking a much more uh, tempo kind of build of Esper Legends. I'm not 100% sure this is stock but we can check that later. Again this is just to like start to understand what these decks look like and also what their interaction suite and what their threats are. The other really big card over here we can see is Wedding Announcement. Uh, I think Subterranean Schooner is like a really, really good card, but I haven't played with it myself. We also have Tishana's Tidebinder, a very good card, and then one Lord Skitter. So that also tells me that there's probably something in graveyards that matter that Lord Skitter will be good for because Lord Skitter makes a rat token and then exiles something from the graveyard. The sideboard has two Duress, two Disdainful Stroke, two Destroy Evils, another two more Tidebinder. There's a Shieldred, two Kicks Command, uh, and then one Loran, one Negate, and one Wandering Emperor. Okay. So Esper Midrange is really, really good and probably a safe bet for a lot of players to play. I personally have some reservations playing this deck, and I will explain why. So that's just a quick glance at this deck, and now we're going to take a look at another one. So the next deck is Domain. I think this one's also like very, very viable. Uh, and basically what this deck is, it's like a ramp control deck uh, where you can see there's four Sunfalls. There's a Topiary Stomper who helps you ramp and also can be a good beater. Archangel of Wrath uh, is just good to play on curve, but also great to play off curve uh, because of the kicker ability, getting you some life, removing something. So I think the only way you really lose with this deck is if you lose to pressure. So having like a little bit of uh, life gain back from the Archangel of Wrath and also getting to Sunfall is very important. And then there's three Atraxas, so that's like your finisher. And then we have four up the Beanstalk to help draw more cards. Is very, very good with Leyline Binding because the primary strategy for Domain is, as the name suggests, we are playing all these dual lands or like triple lands, tri, tri lands. We're playing these tri lands to reduce the cost of Leyline Binding and also synergize with Herd Migration. So Herd Migration, once you get to seven mana, you can uh, cast this and make a bunch of three threes. So we can see how Herd Migration fulfills a couple of different roles. It's our finisher, but also, again, gives us a little bit more time against decks who want to pressure us. Leon Binding is super, super good for this deck. Uh, Sunfall is like one of the strongest kind of board wipes we've seen in a while. It's like in a lot of control decks or just top heavy decks. And then the other thing to know is that there's four Cavern of Souls here. So Cavern of Souls is really, really strong because our finisher is Atraxa. And one of the few ways that you used to be able to beat this deck is by countering all their threats. Uh, but now you can have Cavern of Souls naming Angels and you just resolve the Atraxa. So it just takes away that kind of avenue for uh, blue decks to deny you of your kind of win con. So the other part of Cavern of Souls naming Angels is the Archangel of Wrath, right? And we just saw in Esper Legends that they're playing three Make Disappears. This beats that, right? So even if we're both playing on curve right now, um, being able to just resolve an Archangel of Wrath who has Flying Lifelink, quite strong. Let's take a look at their sideboard. So Lithomantic Barrage deals one damage to a creature, but if that creature is white or blue, it deals five and it can't be countered. And we see there's three copies of this, right? So look at this sideboard, we can tell how much domain is ready to play against all the blue based, like blue white based kind of tempo aggro decks. Uh, there's Depopulate, another board white, we have Double Negate. So the question is, I don't know what negate's here for. Negate might be here for like the mirror. I actually have no idea how the mirror plays out. We have two Chrome Host Seed Sharks. So don't really know what that comes in for. I just think this deck's really good. 
Then we have two knockout blows. So this one deals four damage to attacking or blocking creature and you gain two life, I believe, or you gain some life back. And it costs two less against uh, a red creature. So probably this is here to respect like mono red. Then we have temporary lockdown. So a good way to just clean up a board real quick. Uh, Jace the Perfected Mind. This is really interesting. I wonder if this is in for the mirror where you're drawing a lot of cards and you like mill your opponent. And then Obstinate Bailoff. I'm not exactly sure what this is here for. I guess we'll see in the other decks. Perhaps this is for like Liliana of the Veil. Vale. I think this is also like a really good choice. I think between the two at the moment, I will probably go with Ramp because uh, what I like about Ramp is like like once the game goes long and Domain gets really close to like their top end, this deck's like really hard to beat. So that's why I prefer playing like a deck like this. But next, Golgari Midrange. Uh, so here's the next deck, Golgari Midrange or Aggro, whatever you want to call it, just a Golgari deck. I do have a lot of experience playing this one. I've been playing this one on Arena a lot. Uh, we have four Deep Cavern Bats, which is new. I haven't actually played this card yet. So what does it even do? Because this was in the... If this was in the Esper Legends deck and it's not a legendary creature, I assume it's like very good. Flying Lifelink, and then whenever it enters the battlefield, look at target opponent's hand. You may exile an online card from it until he's about... Oh, that's very good. This is good because uh, if you get to play this on curve, you can like take away the invasion of Zendikar, which really matters. I think most decks that aren't domain need to play cards to like slow them down and like really respect that deck. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Moss with Dread Knight's like a really fun card. Basically, this just like helps you grind. Glissa Sunslayer is good. And then we have this thing. This is new. If an opponent will lose life during your turn, they lose twice. Oh, wow. That's pretty powerful. Okay. So something a little bit more aggressive. 2-4 Flyer. Interesting. And then there's four Sentinels. This is a really good card. This like creates map tokens and map tokens are surprisingly powerful. Uh, Preacher of the Schism. What's this? This card is whenever it attacks a player with most life or tied most life, create. Oh, so it just makes it 1-1. One, one. Whenever it attacks while you have the most life or tied, you draw a card and lose. Oh, wow, that's a really good grind piece. I've never seen this before. That's cool. And then three Shieldreds makes sense. Uh, four cut downs or three cut downs, one Geeks' Command, so respecting some of the aggro decks. Three to rest, four ramp, and then four go for the throw. Two Mistress Foundries and four Ressa's Cottage. Oh, oh I missed out the Nissa. The Nissa is also a really great finisher. Okay, so I know the problems with this deck and the reason why I won't play it, but let's look at the sideboard real quick. Bitter Triumph, Duress, Arena. Oh, there's a Double Lilies. You... Oh, I see. I think Golgari brings in Lily of the Veil against Ramp. I mean, that's one way of disrupting their plan, making them discard their lands and stuff like that, or like their spells. And that's where the Bailoth comes in. But like, does is Golgari really that good? against ramp that's like the problem with golgari like i find golgari is just not good against ramp which is why we can't play it we have rankle's prank two path of perils three triangle frill back so let's read what this does whatever etbs you pay one up to three times if you do destroy target artifact enchantment exile or gain for life oh that's very flexible one more cut down one kills command and one the end and one nissa okay i kind of gave away why we don't want to play this deck and i'll explain why later the next deck is Azoria Soldiers. I've seen this one do really well in events for like a while. So this is taking an older soldier shell and I think adding a couple new cards. So we have like Harbin, a recruitment officer, Lunark Veteran over here. I don't know why Lunark Veteran's over here. I think we're going to find out why. Um, but just like a strong mono white kind of aggro slash tempo deck. Two Tishana's Tidebinder, four Resolute Reinforcements, uh, Zephyr Sentinel. Whenever, when it's ETBs, return up to one creature you control to an owner's hand. If it was a soldier, put plus one, plus one. Oh, cool, it has Flash. Uh, there's four Make Disappear, that makes sense. So these two are really interesting together because basically this lets you, uh, actually this one as well. This means that you can go turn one, play one of these one drops and be pretty happy leaving mana on turn two to tempo them. And if your opponent doesn't like fall for the the make disappear because they're reading that you never get punished for it because you also have four reinforcements or four sentinels and you can also just bounce your one drop and make it a you know plus one plus one flying which is good we have knight of eos oh this one's so good this is such a good card uh it has convoke and when it comes in you get to like put a bunch of cards into your hand so kind of great card 
uh, especially good with resolute reinforcements. Uh, werewolf, werewolf bodyguards, another flash creature, and when ETBs you exile a non fox, you can sacrifice it to gain two life. Cavern of Souls makes sense. The schooner's here, four wedding announcements. Um, kind of similar to the Esper Legend shell, actually, except it doesn't have black. And then you have two Murex over here, two Odawara, two Aganjo. Yeah, and probably like slightly more aggressive. Then for our sideboard, we have two Get Lost. We have two Protect the Negotiators. Lantern Flare, what does this do? Lantern Flare, let's see what this does. Uh, I don't think we're ever doing Cleave. Deals X every target, creature or planeswalker, and you gain X life, or X number. Oh, that's quite good. I've never seen that before. Innovation. Surge of Salvation's good, protects against black and red. So Golgari, I guess. Yeah, all the cutdowns and stuff, you know, that makes sense. Tokaja's Welcome, I think this like lets you draw cards when you play like a, when you get a small dude. Whenever one or more mana value three early, yeah, 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 you draw a card. So uh, this is good for grindier matchups where all your cards basically replace themselves. So even if they kill your one drop or whatever, you're like, cool, I got another card anyway. So good job spending your cut down. Overcharge Amalgam. I haven't seen any of these cards. Four mana flash, exploit when it exploits a creature, counter target spell, activate. Oh, that's neat. That's super neat. So I think this would be like really good against ramp. Loran of the Third Path, Destroy Evil, and One Wandering Emperor. It's really interesting that like all these sideboards have the One Wandering Emperor. Uh, basically what we did was we looked at a bunch of meta decks and we have a pretty good understanding of like, you know, what they do, right? Uh, so the next thing I do before I lock into like what I want to play is I go to this site that most people know, MTG Top 8. And the next thing to do is uh, I mean, we can see the meta share here, but the important part is looking at major events and also kind of like recent events and getting an idea, right? This is like going to tell you how the decks are doing um, despite what the meta share is. What this is doing is it lets me take a look at a big event and kind of see like how the decks are performing, right? So here we can see Band Control and Band Aggro doing very well or like, you know, winning the event. And then the rest of top eight is Azorius and then uh, the Rafine decks losing to the Azorius decks. Uh, and then we have Ramp down here, Boros Aggro, which is a deck I've seen online, but we didn't see on Goldfish. So another good way to just kind of get a good understanding of like the other decks in the meta that might not be as popular. Interesting. And then, oh, look at all the domain decks down here. So like we can see here in the top eight, it's all blue white. And then over here, we also have mono white. So like white's doing really, really well in this meta game. And then we can see like the rest of the event is like ramp or like control. And then like a lot of ramp down here. And then, you know, because they're a larger meta share, I assume we're going to see more Rafines and stuff down here. But still, this is like looking pretty good for me for, to start picking, like, you know, making a decision on like what I want. I can tell that Azorius is probably the way to go. But let's take a look at a couple more events. Showcase, uh, slightly different. Uh, so we have Domain at the very top over here, uh, winning the event. Uh, Azorius coming in second, Esper Rafine. Again, a top eight. So this is just confirming that playing Rafine, playing Esper Legends, playing uh, Azorius, probably like a really safe pick, right? They're doing well. They're placing well. And, you know, I'm picking a deck to like play into RCQs. So I don't really need to pick like the absolute best deck. The important part is I'm making sure that I'm picking a deck that's got game um, and it's just like strong, right? Okay, now that we've looked at all the decks and looked at MTG Top 8 to get some idea of like how the decks are doing, the last step is just like to pick the deck, right? It's time. It's time for us to like make a decision. So ultimately, uh, I kind of knew what deck I wanted to play. But I've been thinking about it for a really long time, and it's going to be Azorius. Uh, not soldiers, but I think tokens. But, you know, we'll figure out which one, wh which flavor of Azorius. And here's the reason why I want to pick Azorius. When you're picking a deck to play into like a meta game, the first thing is that you have to make sure that your deck's got good game against like the main deck, right? Like the, the two big bads over here is Esper Midrange and also Domain. So you basically cannot play a deck that loses to Domain, which is why we cannot play Golgari Midrange, even though it's 9% of the meta. You saw the results up over here, Golgari was not placing, and it's not placing because it's losing to Domain, right? Domain's doing pretty well. Uh, there's like Sunfall, and there's just like all this stuff that like 
Golgari just kind of struggles against. As we were talking to their domain deck, we knew the way it loses is to pressure and also some disruption, which is what Blue White does very well. So knowing that some sort of tempo deck is going to do well against domain, that makes me, you know, want to play this deck more. And that leaves Esper mid-range. They're basically playing a very similar game as us, where the difference is that their land base is much more clunky, I think, and then like ours is much more smoother, uh, which is going to matter. The other reason why I don't want to play Esper mid-range, and here comes the event part of kind of like this decision making, is that I don't want to play Esper mid-range because there's a lot of micro decisions to make. Or when I make a decision like this, I'm also thinking about how I'm going to do with the event, right? So at the beginning of the event, I'm probably going to play Esper Legends or mid-range really, really well because I'm fresh, you know, ready to play and I can make all decisions in the world. When it comes to round five, round six, and I'm starting to get like a little tired, all this stuff accrues, right? So the problem of mid-range or the problem of Esper for me is that when I was playing it, I really enjoyed the deck, but there's so many decisions you have to make. Just looking at this deck over here, it's much, much more simpler, right? You just basically curve out, you play your creatures, your main decisions are like, do you leave mana up for make disappear? Yes, no. Um, but even if you do, you never get punished for it because you have all the flash creatures. The last thing that informs my decision, even though you know we're pretty clear on what deck I want, which is Azorius Soldiers, is thinking about what fits my playstyle, right? Or or what works well given my playstyle. I know that I'm generally very reactive as a player and sometimes like too reactive. So giving myself an aggressive deck just helps me break out of that pattern. And also you just want to be the aggressor. But being the aggressor has like the advantage of like if your opponent slips up, you win. While as the reactive deck, goes back to Esper Midrange, if you make, you, you have a lot more other decisions to make and it's like kind of up to you to like not lose, right? So I'd rather be the person who, you know, is up to me to win rather than like playing not to lose, if that makes sense. So that's how I'll pick a deck for a meta game. I hope this video was helpful if you have never done something like this before. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to be posting arena gameplay of me trying out this blue white soldiers deck just to try it out and we'll see how it goes. But if you're going to be playing RCQ, good luck. See you at the PT.